So this is kind of where we jump into the topic of fingerprinting. So first and foremost, I kind of want to look back at this general error message and get an idea uh, for, because perhaps this might be something that we want to group on, but within every project, you have options under issue grouping to start to write custom fingerprints. So I can open up the docs quickly here. Let me try to move this tab. I think what we want is to look at fingerprint rules. So really three components here, we're going to specify a matcher, which usually corresponds to metadata within the century event the actual expression you want to match upon, and then the new fingerprint that you want Sentry to use. So in this case, we had a question earlier about best practices um, for writing fingerprints. I'd say that it starts with evaluating the issue, um, maybe from a top-down way that we started to explore our noisiest issues, and then starting to look at unique characteristics of that issue that you can kind of distill into fingerprinting values. And you can always use multiple fingerprints to match on. Um, as long as they're sort of specified on the same line within the UI. So in this case, you can specify an error value and we have an error value as well, this sort of 500 server error. So that's probably, or perhaps where we wanna start in this situation. And then you can either tell Sentry that you wanna use a custom fingerprint or a combination of metadata. So variable values are available here as well. And you can combine both of these to form a unique fingerprint. These can be valuable if you wanna split events apart based on tag values or server names, for instance. Um, but again, we started the topic talking about consolidation of Sentry signals. That's not to say that splitting events apart isn't also a valuable use case and can also impact your learning strategy, but that's fingerprinting is here for both of those cases in, in, that situ in those situations. So without going through the exhaustive list of matchers, perhaps this is a good start for, for writing a fingerprint. And in this case, if we wanted to write one for error.value and what we were just seeing here, we could use this variation of the error message. We could do a simpler sort of glob match variation of the error message. And I believe, you know, we could label this whatever we want, server error. This would be, then be used as the fingerprint. We could also tell Sentry that we want to use this fingerprint and to keep sort of its default um, behavior. So the default, uh, I didn't really go through the default behavior, but we talked about sort of going through parts of the metadata, stack trace, error message, or sorry, exception type and value and message and forming a fingerprint based on that. You don't have to completely abandon um, Sentry's default grouping behavior, but in this case you can, if that is what's optimal for your alerting strategy. And I think I might've typed default in there wrong. It might need double brackets here um, as an example, but this is just another example of matching on stack module, absolute path. There's a lot of options here. So the best practice is probably defining a set of matchers um, that's specific to the issue that you're interested in and perhaps starting small with a single issue to see or to evaluate the impact of these rules. If you can simulate um, fingerprinting maybe within a different environment, uh, that might be beneficial as well. But I think the main takeaway here is if the UI isn't an option, you have pretty configurable ways to you know, go from discover, identifying high level issues that might be contributors or just projects that might have more grouping variability and then going into those noisiest issues within that project and identifying whether or not they can in fact be grouped better. And then using sort of moving between Sentry's various grouping options as they're applicable to you know, solving the problem if there is in fact noise being created from these alerts.